I do want to say it's so nice um, to be here in general, but it's also nice to hear such positive things from our state representatives, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm so glad to hear that um, your story about one woman coming in and making, changing your mind. I know that I went to see my legislator. I don't think I had the same powerful effect <laughs> that she did. But, uh, but anyway, um, thank you very much. I'll try to be, uh, to be brief on my remarks as, um, as a victim of discrimination. Um, in summary, I was fired from my job because I'm gay. I was harassed by my former employer. I was then sued by my former employer. And I really want to repeat that because so often when I speak and I get done speaking, people think that somehow I sued my employer. It didn't happen that way. He sued me. And ultimately, he won, and I was forced to pay him $156,000. And um, it was a quite a traumatic uh, event in my life. I was in my early 30s when this occurred. And obviously, I was not. Uh, I didn't have an extra $156,000, not to mention 40 or 50,000 in legal fees. So it really was a devastating um, event. Uh, it wasn't just an event. I, I'd like to think it took five years out of my life. Really, it was a very traumatic thing for me and my family. What happened as as you hear? I'm a CPA. I um, had worked at some different places, and I'm in, uh, I guess it was in 1986, I believe, yes, I started working with DeMuth Management Consultants in Camp Hill, unfortunately. I live in Harrisburg, but just a mile away, I worked in Camp Hill, As, and the reason that's unfortunate is because Harrisburg, for at that time and now, we've had a protection um, from discrimination based on sexual orientation for 20 years, a, a very long time. Unfortunately, in Camp Hill, that did not exist, and it doesn't exist in many parts of the state. I worked there for almost five years. I, um, it, it came out later in testimony that I was the best employee this man had ever had. And that was because I was very productive, and I made a lot of money for him. And it's even ironic in, in court, it also came out that when um, I was the, discovered to be gay, when I was, ended up on television, in support of the hate crimes bill and of and um, some gay bashing that was occurring in Harrisburg at that time for additional police protection. Actually, I went to city council to ask for that. So now I'm on city council. So um, so hopefully that's a positive uh, change in our city. And um, and I didn't get fired right away. You know, I I was very nervous about what happened that night and being on television. I wasn't anticipating that. It just was one of those those things that happened. But the next day, nothing happened. And for two and a half weeks, nothing happened. And in court, what I found out is that I was working on the largest project that we built in that office, period. And I was the one in charge of it, and I was the one doing it. And my employer admitted that he couldn't fire me until I had completed that project, because no one else would be able to do it. But um, what, what did happen is he fired me, and the I don't want to say the beauty of my case, but in a sense, the nice thing about my case is my employer didn't try to hide it. He fired me because I'm gay. It was a very blatant case. He never denied that. He argued that in court. And, um, and I think for that reason, and because of the uniqueness of me being fired, my case did get a lot of publicity. And it's very well documented um, in, in the newspapers and even an article in The New Yorker, I think, in 1994. So, um, so there's no... Um, question that I was fired from being gay, that I was a very fine employee. As a matter of fact, I was scheduled to become a partner within the next coming year. We were looking at office buildings, my, my, uh, my employer and I, to purchase together as partners. So again, that's all well documented. He could not handle the fact that I was a gay American. Although many of my clients had no problems with this. And so after I was fired, I decided I think I'll start my own practice. I did start my own practice, and about a third of the clients came and followed me to my practice. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. We had what's called a covenant not to compete, um, and that happens sometimes with professionals where you're not allowed to go out and take the clients. Um, in this case, my covenant not to compete was extremely broad. It was, for, I could not compete for a period of five years or within a 50-mile radius of any former or current client. Well, 
basically that would be almost impossible to really even determine what that, that is. And so when I went to my attorneys before I began my practice, they said, do not worry about this covenant not to compete. It will never stand up in court. You know, you can, you can go ahead and practice and do your practice. So that's what I did. In the first year of my practice, um, you know, I did get uh, about a third of our clients and things were, were fine. It was a lot, very difficult period for me just to get my practice up and running. It was a lot of work, a lot of stress in many ways. Um, in addition, my employer harassed me in several ways. I think the most egregious way was when he sent a letter to these clients that followed me indicating that I may have AIDS and that they, he recommended that they get a blood test, a copy of a blood test from me in order if they wanted to continue working with me. Now, of course, none of that was true or substantiated, but um, it was, again, another really trying example of stress uh, and, uh, that I had to go through um, in this situation.